So we're starting to get some leaks and some reports of what Mac OS might be shipping with in just a couple months. And it actually sounds kind of interesting. I have to admit this is getting more functional and a lot more intriguing than I think I would have imagined Mac OS to be in 2019 because there's only so much you can do with Mac OS, but I'll tell you what they are today, starting now, let's begin. So for one, and this is something I think a lot of people will appreciate, macOS is going to be getting a lot of the features that iOS already has, which I think makes a lot of sense because while Apple isn't in favor of having one operating system across all of their devices, they are in favor of making their operating systems feel very, very close and intimate with each other. That way it feels like one seamless experience no matter what device you're using, whether it be your iPad, your iPhone, your MacBook, and they're adding a big one to macOS this year, Siri Shortcuts. So while no, Siri is not a huge huge feature on the Mac, Siri Shortcuts definitely allows for a ton of things on iOS and people have gotten incredibly creative with what they can do on their iPhone thanks to Siri Shortcuts and knowing the capability and the third party support we have on the Mac, I'm quite curious to see what people are going to do with Siri Shortcuts now being on the Mac, which in a lot of ways is kind of like rough coding, you know, the kind of if this then that situations people have programmed into their phones. Bringing that to the Mac is going to be super helpful for a ton of people and I've already seen like whole videos that are just designated to really cool Siri shortcuts you could put on your iPhone. So bringing that to the Mac is probably going to open up a whole new door of potential for the Mac users. The other one that isn't as big a deal, but probably important for some others out there is screen time. So being able to monitor how much time you spend in certain devices has been how Apple has kind of pushed liability off them because there were a few lawsuits where people were like, smartphones are addictive. I'm on my phone all day, Apple. What are you gonna do about it? And I feel like Apple was like, I mean, you can just turn off your phone. Why are you blaming us for this? Our job is to make products people like using. Now you're mad at us that you like using the product. Anyway, when they adapt screen time into iOS, that kind of pushes liability over to say, well, we tried to limit the amount of time you spend on technology, but you chose to ignore that feature. So I guess it's your fault. I feel like more for lawsuit reasons, that's why they built screen time into iOS. But if you care about the amount of time you spend on your digital devices and you care about your digital well-being, screen time will be making its way over to the Mac, but I imagine most of us are just gonna leave it off anyway, that's fine. But a much more important feature that I think is incredibly outdated is on the Mac we'll finally be getting iMessage animations for the different screen effects for when you send iMessages with confetti or spotlight or the loud animation. It's ridiculous to me that all these years later you can send a screen effect on an iPhone and you can even see the confetti or the balloons show up on your Apple Watch, but you're telling me that the Macintoshes with built-in AMD GPUs and my iMac Pro with 8 cores, and some people out there have 18 cores, don't have the simple iMessage animations that simply make iMessage more unique and make it more interactive because you can send messages with a, with a certain style to it, whether it be confetti or the echo effect. I love using those iMessage effects on my phone, but for whatever reason, they don't show up on the Mac, even though that huge iMessage redesign was way better back with iOS 10. I was making videos in my attic when they revamped the iMessage app and it's 2019 and still now iMessage on the Mac says sent with loud effect. It's so annoying and it's one of those things that's in the ecosystem that's so noticeably wrong. It's like, Ugh, why can't you guys make it right? I don't know. It's long overdue. I'm glad they're adding it, but regardless, that's not the most exciting thing I've heard about in all these rumors. No, this is a project that's so cool. It has a code name, which they're calling Sidecar, which makes makes more sense when you think about it. They're apparently building in natively to macOS the option of plugging in your iPad to your MacBook and allowing the iPad to act as a secondary monitor. If you guys remember, this has been a third party feature for a very, very long time. In fact, I made videos about it long, long time ago back in the attic. There were apps like Duet Display, and I'm sure there's more apps that do it now. They usually cost money or maybe they're free with ads, but basically you're able to plug your Mac directly into your iPad and suddenly your iPad will become a secondary monitor, which I think is a great idea for them to build in natively, while it may kill the business of some of those third-party apps. To have that native support means it's going to be optimized, it'll be supported. And now that iPad Pros have USB-C, it's going to be easier than ever to just simply take the USB-C cable that came with your MacBook Pro or your iPad Pro, plug it into USB-C on your MacBook or iPad, and boom, instantly have a dual monitor setup. And it's just another one of those things that will make using all of your Apple products 
products in the ecosystem even more seamless and just have them cooperate more together. Now, of course, I'm sure this could also work with a USB-C to lightning cable, though sadly there's not a ton of devices that ship with that, so you may have to go and buy one, but I think it's gonna be awesome that with just a simple cable and probably one toggle, you'll be able to instantly add a secondary monitor to your MacBook or your iMac because the iPad Pros have insanely good displays, ProMotion, in fact. With the amount of USB-C support we have between devices, I bet the iPad Pro might even retain its 120 hertz refresh rate as you're using Mac OS on it. I imagine the most perfect setup could be using a Mac Mini with USB-C plugged in directly to a 13-inch iPad Pro. It's a tiny setup, but you have a really good monitor there connected to a really powerful machine, and I love that that'll just be built into Mac OS automatically. No third-party software necessary, just plug the cables in and boom, it'll start working. I also have to wonder if they'll work on some type of wireless mode. The rumor doesn't suggest this, but I think it would be really neat if there was a way you could kind of airplay your secondary monitor. Obviously, the quality and the refresh rate would probably not be as good, but for simple things, maybe just background apps that are loading text, you don't really care that much about the refresh rate or the quality. Having that secondary monitor could be really helpful for people and being able to kind of just beam your extra display over to the iPad and not have to worry about plugging them into each other could be really helpful for people. So hopefully Sidecar works with wires for pure optimization and wirelessly for pure convenience. Think about being able to use your Apple Pencil on Mac OS with the iPad, just being able to plug it in like that and boom, you can draw at 120 hertz with desktop class apps. I think a lot of people will take advantage of that. But anyway, those are the major new leaks and rumors that we're hearing about Mac OS. As always, take everything with a grain of salt. It might not happen, but there's been a lot of rumors dumping out of iOS and Mac OS this year, and I feel it's quite possible Apple's kind of intentionally letting it slide so people get hyped and maybe people think about buying iPads and MacBooks before the event takes place. Of course, we'll find out all the real details in June at the Worldwide Developers Conference, which I'm very excited for. And let me know what of these features today you're most excited for and what features I haven't talked about that you'd like to see in the next generation of Mac OS. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.